G'day guys, it's Luke here from Tech Blokes and Android Q Beta 5 is available as an over-the-air update and uh, I've got it on my Pixel 2 XL here and I've been trying it out for the last 24 hours and uh, it's, it's really great and I'm really enjoying some of the minor changes that have come through. Uh, as a whole, the system is very stable. It feels, in my opinion, better than Beta 4 and um, one thing I've noticed already in just the time I've been using it is uh, battery life seems to be going uh, a lot better than what I had on Beta 4. So fingers crossed that uh, older devices like the Pixel 2 XL and the original Pixel see a bit of a bump in battery life. Now obviously we know that the Pixel 3a and 3a XL are already very good with battery but um, it's just great to see that Google is looking after the older devices such as the Pixel 2 XL as well. So the first thing that we generally do is have a look at the build number. So let's do that now. So the build number for this one is QPP5.190530.014. Now the first thing that you will notice when you boot up your device. So if you're using a Pixel 3 or 3XL, you're actually gonna get a dark boot screen. Now, I've only got the Pixel 2 XL, so I can't show you the, the dark boot screen. So the only way that you will actually see that dark boot screen is if you actually reboot your device two times. So if you don't see it the first time, just turn it off, turn it back on, and you'll see that dark boot screen. Now, one thing that I've noticed when I've booted up the device is down the bottom here, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see, I'm in dark mode at the moment, but you can see that there's two rounded swipe in gestures and this brings up the Google Assistant there you go it's bring it's reading my voice and it's a great way to bring up the voice assistant without um, having to squeeze the device personally I've, I've never really liked the squeeze function um, I've always been the person that kind of bumps that in my pocket uh, it's really cool that we now have the two um, swipe ins from either side of the screen to bring up the Google Assistant now in beta 5 we actually have the ability to set how hard the squeeze is so that when you um, are setting that up you get a bit more clarity around how hard you need to squeeze to turn that on so if you go into active edge inside settings you will notice that when I squeeze now I get two little pop outs from the side to indicate how hard I'm actually doing that and I get a haptic feedback in the phone so I just kind of get more information about how hard I need to press. And I think that that's great that they've updated this. I've always felt like that was a bit clunky. Now, what's really cool is they've actually given us the ability to turn certain apps that don't use dark mode into a forced dark mode. So what we want to do to turn that on is we go into the settings and we scroll down and we go into developer options. All right, so the option that we want to turn on here is this one, which is called Override Force Dark. So turning, turning that on will essentially turn apps that would typically use a white background. It's going to give you a dark background. So uh, I know that Instagram is one that works. So there we go, guys. So uh, I know Instagram definitely works with this Force Dark mode, but the actual App Store works with the Force Dark mode as well. Um, and just on a side note, Dr. Mario came out this week, which has been really cool. Make sure you check that out, it's a great game. So with notifications, they've made some changes to the way that you can snooze different um, notifications as they come through. In the past, in uh, previous betas, when you swipe to the left, you've got the cog, but you'd also have a snooze notification just below that. Now they've actually uh, gotten rid of that in the default uh, beta five. You can turn it back on inside settings, but I'm one of those people that definitely doesn't use that snooze. So I'm kind of glad that they've gotten rid of it. And I feel like most people don't really use it either. But again, if that is something that you do want to use, you can go in there and turn that back on. Now, when you lock your device, you will only see priority notifications come up. In the past, you would see all of your notifications there. But if you've set a particular notification to a lower priority, you will no longer see that on the lock screen. So that helps just declutter things and uh, I'm all for decluttering. So I really do enjoy uh, just having the, the major notifications coming up on my lock screen. Now in the previous beta, they did make some changes to the icons for Wi-Fi, but in this beta, they've actually, when I turn off 
this one here. They've kind of changed the iconography for the mobile data up the top there. Depending on what you get in your local area, I get 4G here. Um, you might get 4G Plus or LTE. Uh, this will actually change and it look, just looks a bit neater and it ties in with the rest of the uh, iconography that uh, they've rolled out for Android Beta Q. So one of the other changes with Beta 5 is the ability that you can now uh, pin applications so that they're harder to get out of, which is great if you've got young kids and you don't want them to be uh, you know, jumping between apps and accidentally deleting emails. So what you'll need to do, it's not actually turned on by default. You need to go into settings and turn this option on. So if you go into your settings and you'll find screen pinning, you need to turn that on first. And then when you um, swipe up and hold and click the little icon at the top here, you'll see you've got the pin option there. So when you click pin, it'll say screen is now pinned. Just hit OK. Now it just means that you can't, you can't swipe, you can't get out of that app, which is really good if you've got uh, young children, like I said, you know, maybe you just want them to play a particular game or you just want them to watch YouTube or something like that. It just means they can't accidentally get out of it. So when you swipe up and hold, it will then, you'll get a bit of haptic feedback and then you can then um, unpin that application and use your phone like normal. So that's a great addition and I can imagine that's gonna be really helpful for a lot of people. So one of the annoying things with Beta 4 was although we had these really cool swipe gestures to go back and forward, um, unfortunately, what would happen quite often is, say for example, I wanted to swipe out and get the burger menu here, it would always take me back a screen and I really didn't like that, it was quite annoying. So they've kind of changed that now. So essentially what you would do is kind of hold your finger to the left of the screen there and then you will get the swipe out so that you can get out to the burger menu. Now, it is a little bit annoying, I will admit, it still doesn't work perfectly, but I like that they're actually going in there and trying to make that uh, swipe gesture work a little bit better. Yes, it's probably still not as good as iOS, but it's definitely on the way there. And I think as they continue to roll out more betas, this will just get better and better each time. Now, having a look through the settings, I haven't really noticed any other major changes. Um, one thing that I did mention uh, in the last video I did was the ability to change the accent color. That seems to be the same with this particular release. So um, I really like some of the new colors. This orchard one's really nice and the icon shapes, so they're still the same. We've got square, we have the teardrop, which is this one here, looks really cool. And we also have the squircle, which is kind of a square circle, but I still think the default one is the nicest one. So there we go guys, just a handful of changes with Beta 5, but um, they're really making some great progress. I'm actually really excited for the full release, which is not far away now. So guys, what do you love about Android Q? Is there a particular feature or a particular function that you really like? So I'm actually gonna report back on battery life. I feel like there's been some under the hood changes there, and uh, I don't know why, but I just feel like this Pixel 2 seems to be lasting a bit longer than what it normally would. So I'll report back on that guys in a week or two. If there's any questions, if you've got any comments, drop them below and make sure you hit the subscribe and notification bell. Thanks guys, cheers.